I'm Yolanda Condonassis, and I've just written a book called The Composer's Guide to Writing Well for the Modern Harp. In this companion video to the book, I'd like to focus on special effects. There is probably no instrument that can do more cool effects than the harp. It's an absolute toy store of sounds, which is why I devoted almost 30 pages of my book to detailed descriptions and notation of special effects. I'd like to start by showing you some of the most traditional effects on the harp that composers have been using for decades. Here's a quick rundown. The rolled chord. On the harp, most chords are rolled unless indicated otherwise, but chords can be handled in a multitude of ways. The most basic differentiations are the following. Upward rolled. Downward rolled. Flat also called block, or cracked, which is rolling the chord only slightly. The glissando is perhaps the harp's signature effect, but this effect has countless variations, which we'll get a lot more into later. But here is the glissando in its most traditional form. The harmonic is also a signature sonority on the harp, and its most traditional execution sounds like this. The physical technique is quite different for each hand when making a harmonic. Articulation on the harp is a manual affair, and almost always involves some form of muffle, which means to damp the strings and stop the sound. There is a detailed list of all the different muffles and their notations in my book, but here are a couple of basic examples. The pedal glissando is an effect that's become quite common during the last several decades, and instead of sliding the finger up the strings, we actually slide the pedal between notches. It uses the natural sound made by moving the pedal against a ringing string. Trills, tremolos, and bisbigliandos, I love saying that word, are wonderfully effective on the harp, especially since pedal configurations can achieve doubled pitches and really interesting combinations that allow identical pitches to ring simultaneously through the magic of enharmonics on the harp. Now that we've covered some of the more traditional techniques, I'd like to get into some of the really fun, outside-the-box stuff that the harp can do. For the sake of organization, I've divided these effects into several categories. Glissando effects, coloration effects, spotlight effects, pedal effects, percussive effects, and prepared effects. I'll go through each category separately. A lot more detail on execution and notation can be found in my book. If you have my book, you can follow along with the notation and full descriptions of each effect in Chapter 21. I'll go in the same order as these effects are listed in my book. Let's start with glissando effects. The contoured glissando. <laughs> The falling hail glissando. The 
The Phantom Glissando. Ascending Aeolian Chords. Descending Aeolian Chords. Falling Hail Aeolian Chords. Ascending Gushing Chord. Descending Gushing Chord. The falling hail gushing chord. The glissando tremolo. The rustling tremolo. The Crashing Thunder Glissando. The Smash Glissando. The Washboard Effect. Now let's move on to coloration effects. The Pre de la Table effect, or playing near the soundboard, abbreviated PDLT. Playing a little lower in the strings, but not all the way down at the table. playing higher in the strings. When making a special indication of where to play on the harp, it's important to also then indicate ord or ordinaire so that the harpist knows to return to normal playing position. You can get an interesting color change by indicating to move from either the middle of the strings to the board or vice versa, PDLT to ORD or ORD to PDLT. The short string effect, playing in between the tuning pin and the string nut. The xylophonic effect. The banjo effect. The nail effect. The vibrato effect. The muted effect. First, the soundboard mute. Next, the mid-string mute. The Bartok pizzicato effect.
the nail flick. The pinched pitch effect. The xylo harmonic. Irregular harmonics producing a pitch a twelfth above. The next category is one I like to call spotlight effects because these are sounds that really get your attention and make a statement. The whistle effect. Whistle variations. First, with the nail. Next, with a pick. Next, with a protractor. This is a soft rubber, not a hard plastic. A protractor is great for making specific pitches with your whistles. And now, a hard metal plectrum, like a tuning fork. The wet whistle made by sliding a damp cloth up the length of the string. The gong effect. the gong tremolo. And the dead gong. The clap slap effect. The metallic buzz effect. The metallic tremolo effect. The metallic chord effect. The sizzle muffle. The bowed string effect on the harp is a little bit tricky because in order to make a loud sound, you really need rosin. And a lot of harpists may not be willing to put rosin on their harp strings. But if you want to try it without rosin, it makes a very subtle bowed sound. Something like this. The single string slide effect. In order to make the pitch go down, you actually have to slide up. In order to make the pitch go up, you actually have to slide down. The single string glissando effect can be made in two ways. One, by plucking the string and letting it ring while you slide the metal plectrum.
and two, by continuing to pluck the string while you slide. The rocket slide effect. The sliding chromatic scale effect. The quivering glissando effect. The muffled quivering glissando effect. Next, I'd like to demo effects made with the pedals of the harp. The traditional pedal glissando. This is a jazz pedal slide, and it's typically done a little faster and with a little bit of swing. The grinding slide uses the richest point of contact between the shift and positions to make a grinding, rather metallic, abrasive slide sound. The filled slide Pedal tremolo. The decaying rhythmic slide. The post glissando decaying rhythmic slide. The metallic quarter tone effect. The fixed metallic quarter tone effect. For this effect, something should be wedged in the pedal notch itself so that the effect is consistent throughout a piece or a section. Esoteric sounds. These effects come by their name rightfully because they're extremely subtle and are made without playing any strings at all, but just by moving the pedals 
and hearing them slightly shift in their notches. Percussive effects are some of my favorites because they allow the harp to step pretty far away from its traditional sound palette. The percussive soundboard effect. This effect can be done with various parts of the hand. My favorite part to use is the fingertips because I feel like I have the most control, but it can also be done with the knuckles or the flat of the hand. I'm going to demonstrate what it sounds like with the fingertips. The percussive body knock effect gives a slightly more echoey tone than the soundboard. And it sounds like this. And the best way to do it is usually with the knuckles because that'll give you the most resonant sound. The single string percussive effect is one of my favorites and is made by tapping on very specific strings, usually in the bass wire register. Striking the string with mallets usually produces more of a chord cluster than a single pitch. This is a rubber mallet. Percussive tools and objects that make interesting sounds on the harp are fairly limitless, but here are some that I think are especially effective. A screwdriver, it's important to use a Phillips head. It causes a little less damage if it's dropped, which we don't want to do. Spoons, which essentially gives a harpist metal thumbs. Triangle beaters, a cymbal brush, mallets. I like rubber best for the bounce and clarity of sound, but plastic and yarn mallets are also very effective. A fly swatter can also be very interesting. A paintbrush, a rubber spatula, a pancake flipper, a tuning fork, and one of my favorites, a personal soft bladed fan, which you can find in many variations on the internet and a lot of shops carry them as well. But the kind I like the best is one that I plug into my phone, I remove the plastic blade, and instead put just regular scotch tape on there, smash it together, and roll over the very end so I have a nice defined but very soft and gentle blade that I can control completely on the harp. And if I want a slightly more substantial sound, I just make an additional layer of tape. So it gives me a lot of flexibility. <laughs>
The last category consists of prepared effects, and the options here are pretty limitless. The two main ways to prepare a harp for unique sounds are to weave material through the strings or to hang, wedge, or place objects on the strings. Here is a sampling of some of my favorite prepared sounds. Paper. <laughs> Felt. This is what it sounds like when erasers are wedged between the strings. This is a great effect if you want a xylophonic-like sound with the right hand, but you need the left hand for other things. This is what it sounds like with a wooden honey dipper wedged in between two strings. Of course, you can use more than just one, but here's what it sounds like. A tuning fork hung along the base of the strings creates an interesting kind of metallic effect. Safety pins and paper clips give a really cool shimmery metallic quality to the strings when you play them. I have affixed safety pins up here and paper clips down here so you can hear the difference. This is what it sounds like when bobby pins are hung from the strings of the harp. It's also possible to attach them to the strings, although sometimes they'll fly off, and I actually like them hung a little bit better because every string will sound ever so slightly different depending on the way the bobby pin whips around when the string vibrates. In this example, I have tied cut rubber bands around the string in a single tight knot. You can experiment a lot with the placement of the rubber band on the string, but what I like about this placement is it gives the quality of sort of a, a dead harmonic and also a little bit of a xylophonic effect where the string's resonance is decreased. So it's a really interesting and unique sound. As you can see, there is practically no limit to what the harp can do in terms of color and sonic interest. For lots more detail on these and other cool things to do with the harp in your compositions, check out my book, The Composer's Guide to Writing Well for the Modern Harp. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.